Valley Cloud, the chase for the All Father Odin is upon us. And if you want to enter Dark Dimension 8 right away for that early unlock, you're going to need to equip ISO 8 Purple Level 3 on your characters. And since it's such a rare material, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and build the wrong characters. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top picks for Dark Dimension 8 and that early Odin unlock. And if you're ready to see who to build and who to skip, and you know to do Valley Club, find that like button and let's go smash it. And welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying. Hope you're having a great weekend. In this video, we're gonna get you all set up for Dark Dimension 8 and which characters to put ISO 8 purple level three on and which ones to skip. But before we get to the best choices, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. Every week, we have at least minimum five Marvel Strike Force videos help you in every type of way. Gameplay videos, question and answer videos, news videos let's start by talking about the blog from a few weeks ago announcing a purple iso 8 level 3 it is in the game right now there's a store for it and you can start to buy some supplies for it but which characters do you need to equip it for well if you want to get that odin unlock you're going to need some city villain non-legendary city heroes non-legendary global heroes non-legendary global villains non-legendary and then cosmic characters or legendary characters. So unfortunately, not a, over, not a lot of overlapping traits here. So from what I'm seeing, 25 characters that you need to build up to get that Odin unlocked. So you need 25 characters at ISO 8 purple level three. Let's start with the choices for city villain, non-legendary, no green goblin classic, no black cat, no doc ox. So the rest of these characters are eligible. And for myself, I probably am gonna be leaning into the superior slash sinister six and probably not gonna do Mysterio. You may wanna do Mysterio, but I'm gonna do Vulture. I think that's a great choice, has a lot of value, is a character that I ended up taking in Dark Dimension 7. Lizard is a character that I'm using all the time in War and Cosmic Crucible. Same thing with Kraven, same thing with Spider Slayer. So these four characters I am bringing up. And then the next character, I'm probably it's probably gonna be Red Goblin for me. Now Mysterio is a great character to part of that team. I just don't find myself using him as much. So if you're using Mysterio a lot, I think it's a great choice to just have some good synergy with all of these characters. If you're not using him a lot like I am, I think uh, Red Goblin is a good choice if you're gonna look at the rest of the Hive Mind characters because Venom is okay. Carnage, you really bring him in for a passive. Red Goblin, you want that character to survive to potentially bring some of the Hive Mind characters back to life if they die. So Red Goblin is who I'm choosing, but Mysterio is an awesome choice for this section as well. All right, a lot of great choices in the City Heroes section and a few different ways you could go. I think the first and most obvious way you could go in this section is to build the full Spider Society. They're a great team in the raids. They're very good in Cosmic Crucible, very good in war. And they are required for this skill, the uh, hero skill section of the old man Logan trials. As I'm recording this, it is going on right now. But if it's not going on, you're watching this in future. If you want to beat that highest difficulty for old man Logan, you do need a built up spider society. So that is one of the first options there. I still like Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes. Miss Marvel Hardlight did lose a lot of value, so I don't think that's a great option as well. We have a Hive Mind character here in Gwenum. We have two new words as well, and I think it really depends on what game mode you value. I think if you're looking for the most well-rounded choice here, you go full Spider Society. Like I said, a lot of value in multiple game modes and for needed for that Old Man Logan unlock. However, I'm going to go with kind of a hybrid. I'm going to take out Spider Noir. I'm going to put in Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes because Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes, I feel, still has some value. Yeah, Secret Defenders aren't used in Arena anymore, but still very good in War, still very good in Cosmic Crucible. And I feel that Ghost Rider Robbie is a little more valuable than Spider Noir. Spider Noir does have that Spider Society tag, though, so that is a great option as well. But I'm going to go with Penny Parker, Peter B., Spider-Man Pov, no Noir. I'm going to go Ghost Spider, though, and Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes. Those are my picks. You have some good options here as well, but that, that is why I'm picking. Let me know who you're going to take in the City Villain and City Hero sections. As we move on to what I think is the toughest section to make a choice for, because there's so many different directions you can go, Global Hero section. Now, I think Black Knight is an awesome character. Yeah, he's going to be losing a lot of arena value now that Annihilators have arrived, but I think he still has a lot of value in other game modes to make this justification worth it. Same thing with Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler still is part of that extreme X-Men team for the raids, and that is one direction you should go as well, but I think Nightcrawler on his own 
is a great character. These are two characters that I did take into Dark Dimension 7. Now, if you're going with Nightcrawler, you may want to continue to lean into that extreme X-Men, building other characters like Gambit. Rogue does not count because she's a legendary character and she's technically not an extreme X-Men, although she's paired with them a lot. Forge is an awesome character as well. That is one direction you could go. You could also go with the Alpha Flight uh, direction as well. Sasquatch, Guardian, Wolverine, Sunfire, and then we have North Star as well. So you can go full Alpha Flight. They're required in the Spotlight Raids, and they're very good on war defense. So that's not a bad option there. You have some standalone characters that have value, like Spider Weaver and Quicksilver. And you also have a couple Illuminati characters uh, Black Panther, Shuri, Hank Pym, they do have some, they do have a very good kit. So even if you're not using them on a full Illuminati team, Cosmic Crucible, they're pretty good in war as well. You may want to still build them because they have a more recent kit and usually the newer characters have better kits and are having a little more long-term value. You can go full Pegasus, although you're not going to have Kestrel and Pegasus is not as valuable as they used to be. And then you have a couple characters like Panda Pool that you could lean into with the Extreme X-Men or excuse me, the Mercs for Money team, which is very good in war. For myself though, I think what I'm gonna do is Black Knight, uh, Nightcrawler. And then I'm, I'm gonna continue with Quicksilver. Just doesn't really have a solid team that I use them on. Just is kind of annoying in a lot of different places. So I'm gonna use Quicksilver. And then I'm gonna go with a few different hybrid teams. Uh, starting to lean into Gambit because if we're going Gambit and Nightcrawler, that could be very, very annoying for defense in Cosmic Crucible and War. And then Forge, because when you're doing an extreme X-Men team on defense, one of the things that uh, you don't want is Forge to bring these characters back to life. So for myself, my picks right now, they're going to be Forge, Quicksilver, Gambit, Black Knight, and Nightcrawler. Let me know your, what direction you're going to lead into. A lot of different ways you could go with this team. The choice for global villains is a lot more clear than the global hero section. You got one of the best characters in the game right now in Apocalypse. And if you have Apocalypse unlocked, bring him into Dark Dimension 8. Get that purple ISO 8 on him. Uh, it's just going to make him a better character. As we see, we also have some other characters that I took into Dark Dimension 7. The Cabal team in Namor, Iron Patriot, and Leader. Great characters if you are into Cosmic Crucible. If not, there are some other options that I do want to discuss. One of them is Dokken. If you're leaning into that Mercs for Money team with Old Man Logan for Legendary, Panda Pool for one of the earlier sections, Dokken may be a character that you want to start to build up. Uh, some other choices here are Ares. Now, if you're really into war, Ares is a good way to go. Doesn't have a lot of value outside of war, and he's probably going to suck in Dark Dimension 8 itself, but if you want to build them as big as possible for war, Ares is a great choice. We have Titania and Moonstone, which are part of the Masters of Evil. Very good characters. If you're still using the Masters of Evil, you may have some justification to build them up, but if not, probably want to avoid them. So for myself, what I'm going to do for this global villain section, obviously I'm going to go with Apocalypse. I'm going to go with Cabal because I like Cosmic Crucible. And then last, it's either going to be Ares or Doc. And at this time, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I It's probably going to be Doc but it may be Ares. I'm not super into war. I am into Cosmic Crucible, which for me, uh, the Mercs for Money have a little bit more value than uh, Ares does in Cosmic Crucible. Although everybody has Ares at low stars right now. Once Ares has those high stars, his value may extend to other game modes. So that's why I'm not sure at this point, but it's probably gonna be either Ares or Dokken. Other choices here, some good characters that you might be tempted to put resources in. Emma Frost is a good character, but more kit-based than stat-based, so I'm not sure if you need some extra stats on her. Same thing with Zemo. I'm pairing him a lot with the Cabal characters, but not thinking of taking him into Dark Dimension 8. And Zombie Juggernaut is a good, good character, but relegated to that Undying team, which I'm not using a lot, so not a character that I'm going to put ISO 8 purple on, but let me know your thoughts on what you're doing in Global Villains. And the final section for Dark Dimension 8 is a Cosmic or Legendary section. There's a lot of great Legendary characters that you can bring in. But some great cosmic options are the Annihilators. Now, as of me recording this, they're not fully in the game yet. I do fully expect them to be in the game by the time Dark Dimension 8 rolls around. And I hope their free-to-play release events all happen before the release of Dark Dimension 8, making this an option. I always think that the arena teams are the teams that you need to prioritize. And since this is an arena team, that's probably who I am building up. Now, got another great option here in Super Scroll. Very, very good character. And if you want to lean into some of these other characters like Ultimus or Void Knight, Cersei, 
Yeah, Chris, that's an option for you as well. However, I would switch over to the legendary section to round out this team. And when we switch to the legendary section, old man Logan, I think is a very valuable character. He did lose some arena value, not really uh, getting that value in arena now that the Annihilators have come, especially Gladiator that really screws up the turn meter for old man Logan. But still has a lot of value in Cosmic Crucible, still has a lot of value in War. So we only need this old man Logan pick for the legendary section with those four Annihilators and Super Scroll. Although Green Goblin Classic and Black Cat are still great options as well. If you don't want to bring the Annihilators and uh, or maybe not Super Scroll or something like that. Not sure if I'm going to have Mephisto unlocked by the time Dark Dimension 8 rolls around. May have started to level up some characters a little too soon. And uh, I am definitely going to build Old Man Logan as Super Scroll, which means and Gladiator as well. Which means that if I am bringing Mephisto, I'm probably going to leave off Gore or Endgame Thanos. I think Endgame Thanos has a little bit more value. So it's probably going to be Gore that I am leaving off. Although if I'm looking back at hindsight, what I would do if I already had Mephisto unlocked, I'm going to do these Annihilators, Super Scroll and Mephisto and leave Old Man Logan on the side. But since I've already started building them, this is the direction I'm going to go. And I'm going to leave off one of the Annihilators if I do get Mephisto unlocked before Dark Dimension 8. Let me know your thoughts on this Cosmic slash Legendary section. So those are the characters that I'm bringing into Dark Dimension 8 right now. Still not sure if some of the choices for the global section, both the hero and the villain section. But let me know what you're going to do right now for Dark Dimension 8. Obviously, I wouldn't equip any purple ISO 8 except for a few characters. I think Apocalypse does have that justification. Same with Mephisto. Same thing with Super Scroll. And last but not least, I think Old Man Logan does get that justification as well. And if you do unlock Mephisto, I think it's the proper choice to leave off one of the Annihilators, at least for the time being. But let me know your thoughts, guys. Hopefully you got some value on this video and make some good choices for Dark Dimension 8. And if you did get some value, leave the video a like. It is free for you. Tremendously helps at the YouTube channel with that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see what are the best teams in Marvel Strike Force right now, Check out the video up there and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Hulk fist bump. Valley flying out.